Between January 2020 and April 2021, over 555,000 people moved to Florida. And the website move.com reported that Florida was the number one destination for people relocating within the United States. Where are they coming from? And where are they choosing to relocate within Florida and why? If you're thinking about moving to Florida or already in the relocation process, then this video's for you. I have with me today in studio, the founder of an amazing website called the Moving to Florida Guide, which has a ton of data and statistics about all the information you'd wanna find when you're relocating to Florida all in one place. So stay tuned till the end because we're gonna be answering some of the comments people left about relocating to these various cities. By the way, if it's your first time here and you're in the process of relocating to Florida, especially Orlando, be sure and subscribe and stay tuned for more informative videos. So Paul, thanks for coming in today. Glad to be here. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You have become quickly this expert on the data side of the, the people relocating to the various cities of Florida. Yes. Um, so uh, give our viewers a little bit of a background. So the website that I have is the moving to Florida guide.com. Lots of great statistics out there. For example, you know, what are the most popular cities that people are moving to in the state of Florida? We compare West coast versus East coast. You know, what is the difference between the coasts? What are the top beaches, for example, on each coast. Things you might not think about at first glance, but maybe like, you know, what are the amount of hurricane hits per coast? Even more detailed information about, you know, what are the top, you know, large master plan communities in Florida that are attracting people to. While you're watching this, I want you to try something. Open up a new tab on your browser and literally Google moving to Florida. And I want you to comment below the position on the first page of Google that you see this moving to Florida guide after you click on it. Also comment below where you're thinking of relocating from as you watch this video. All right, so Paul. Yes. Let's start with the, the broad level statistics, right? What are the numbers of people moving to the state of Florida that you've researched for your website? I noticed you have a section on here that kind of outlines the top places they're moving to. We look at the National Association of you know, Realtors, we look at statistics they put out. We also compare and contrast that data with WalletHub. They put out a survey in early 2021, which was actually based upon a seven year study of over 515 cities nationwide. So they looked at a lot of, you know, positive indicators for cities, which cities are growing, you know, what are the reasons that attract these people? We saw a lot of, you know, data relating to, you know, good job growth. Um, right. You know, it's not just where's the prettiest, newest homes. It's what's going to be best for my family. Where can I obtain great income compared to the cost of living? And then there's other amenities that you might want to include in your discussion. And I had an interesting stat from 2020. 28% of the people that relocated to the Sunshine State were from Texas. Also, another 15% came from New York State. And now we're seeing a shift of a ton of Californians because Disney has announced a 60-acre campus to be built in the Lake Nona region of Orlando. So we've already started to help multiple families relocate from California. And some of those have some relocation packages, which we'll talk about later, the best practices when you're relocating because you might have a corporate relocation. Let's talk about some of the top 10, starting from the West Coast, because you live in Sarasota. On the West Coast of Florida here, we have basically four. We have Liquid Ranch, which is in the Sarasota uh, Manatee County, kind of where the, the county line splits there, which is about an hour south of Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit further, Sarasota County, we have Welland Park. And then moving further down the coastline, kind of northeast Fort Myers, we have another popular community, which is Babcock Ranch, which is actually the first solar powered city in America. They have, I think it's 770,000 solar panels that they've installed through a partnership with FPL, but it's America's first solar powered town, which is very interesting in itself. That's pretty cool. I mean, I see a a lot of solar installations here in Lake Nona, especially yes. on the new homes uh, after the fact. Sometimes it's with the builder too, but you just got to be careful about, you know, the cost and the credits and that's probably a topic for another YouTube video. So thank you for that. Back <laughs> okay. to the next uh, master Yeah, plan. so just continuing down the coast a little bit more, um, a little bit further down from the Fort Myers area, um, east of the Naples area, we have a community called Ave Maria. You have an affinity for the beach and that clear water Gulf Coast type beaches, sunsets, and you'd like to live where people vacation, but still have good schools, right? Yes. And amenities around you um, that up and down that West Coast, but not necessarily right on the beach. Exactly. Most of these master plan communities being very large in size, uh, most of them are roughly, you know, I'd say about 10,000 acres up to about 30,000, which 
roughly is about 15 and a half up to about 48 square miles in size. Mm -hmm. So obviously a lot of these newer communities with, you know, all the concepts that are planned into them, obviously we don't have that amount of space, you know, on the beach that land has been previously developed. So typically what you'll see on the West coast, they're a little bit East of the interstate 75, maybe on the East coast, a little bit West of 95. Right. Like Lakewood <coughs> Ranch, for yeah. example, I've, I've sold a house there with a customer who was relocating uh, normally I don't go that far. That's why we have these, uh, relocation partners, Yes, which I'll talk about later in this video. I really want you guys to go to this website. If you are hunting multiple areas of Florida, not just Orlando, because this is going to put you in touch directly with that local expert for that community. Lakewood ranch, right? It's, it's just become this great place for, I want to call the savvy suburbanite demographic yes. to live in for the great schools, newer homes, bigger home sites if you're in that luxury price point. But price point, you know, we have to discuss that a little bit because it's meaningless if we don't talk about price, you know, because of course you could say, I want a beautiful home that's on a lake with a pool in Florida that's new or newer for what, 400,000. If we want to find something like that, we might have to look a little further out. It might not be in the center of that beautiful community, but we will certainly help you with uh, the prices of what's actually selling and that's something that's for another call or for a private Zoom call. So if you're interested in something like that, be sure and comment below or reach out to us. So let's shift over to more the central or the east coast. Focusing more on central Florida, um, in the Orlando area, we have a community called Lake Nona. And then a little bit west of that in the central Florida region, we have in the Villages, Florida, a very popular community, 55 plus community called the Villages. Uh -huh. Moving over to the east coast of Florida, the Atlantic coast, just a little bit south of Jacksonville, we have in Ponte Vedra, a community called Nocatee. Nocatee, yes, that one's growing. That actually comes after a, uh, or named after an Indian name, meaning um, peaceful river. Further down the coast here, we have a community called Latitude Margaritaville, which is in the Daytona Beach area. And you can and see that it's not uh, directly on the beach, but it's pretty close to the highway. Yeah. And so when they have, like you said, they have that opportunity for more land to really do it right and plan out not just where the houses are going to go, but exactly amenities. business parks, you know, medical facilities and things we'll get more into with the amenities they provide. Mm -hmm. um, but to finish out our list here, um, we also have over in Melbourne, Florida, we have Vieira. And we are pretty close to that here in Lake Nona because we're on that southeast side of Orlando. So to get over to Cocoa Beach, Melbourne down to Vieira is is a pretty short drive. How long did it take you to get over here from from Sarasota? Uh, exactly. Two hours. And that's through rush hour traffic. Yeah, that's not bad. I no, mean, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. I, I feel like some New Yorkers <laughs> or Washington DCers around the 495 Beltway might say, huh, that's my, that's my commute in the snow when I get home from work. So yes, of course I'm looking at, you know, sunshine, palm trees, uh, you know, yeah, view is pretty nice. That's good. And a rising star within this ranking system, kind of like the uh, college football AP poll where your team is like coming up the ranks is horizon West winter garden on the backside of Disney world. That is a very uh, popular master planned area with a lot more growth yet to come and some impressive sales numbers. You know, one statistic I found interesting for yes. all those thousand people moving a day to Florida, there's people leaving too. For every one person that departed Tampa, 1.5 people chose to move there. According to a LinkedIn analysis of a 2020 zip code, uh, the same was true for Jacksonville. There are people moving here in droves, but there's people relocating out as well but there's definitely more people moving here than there are people leaving. And thus, Florida is becoming quite popular. And according to state projections, that's not stopping anytime soon. They're saying until the year 2025, we're going to see an average of about 845 people a day continuing to choose to move to Florida. And because of that, our housing prices continue to rise both in resale and new construction. But one of the things that I take solace in is because you're in one of these bigger master plan areas, you're not the last house to be built. There's still more growth yet to come not just with houses, but with amenities, schools, businesses coming there, you know, and besides not just master plan communities, but there's excellent established areas of these cities where there's still some new construction being built, but in some cases you got to tear a property down and then look for a custom builder, but you're closer into all the amenities. So you can just move right in and enjoy everything around that area. 
And we have some stats from the website again here. These are Florida's 10 largest metropolitan areas that people are relocating to. If you're not necessarily familiar with the Florida demographic, the largest population area is obviously the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach region, which has roughly 6.1 million people. Second largest market is Tampa Bay with Tampa, St. Pete and Clearwater at about 3.1 million. Mm -hmm. And the third largest market in our state here is Orlando, which includes Kissimmee and Sanford at about 2.5 million. And Orlando is really spread out. So it's not yes. just like downtown Orlando. In fact, right here, we're sitting on the southeast corner of Orange County, almost to the Osceola County line. And we're still considered city of Orlando. You know, it's such an urban sprawl. Well, a lot of the master plan communities that are being built aren't necessarily in the most dense areas currently. Mm -hmm. I guess one of the cons of buying into a master plan community, especially really early on, is you might feel like you're kind of out there. And it's like, well, all this stuff is coming, but it's not here yet. Uh, but if you get in at a good price and you don't mind that longer wait and let it mature, uh, that could be a great investment. You could also maybe buy and rent it out if the HOA allows you to rent it out right away. You might have to wait one year in certain cases, and then you let it mature, and then you can move into it when you want to. What are you seeing, Paul, as far as some of the questions that you're getting from people through the website to your relocation experts when they're deciding to relocate? One common question that we typically get is, you know, should I rent before I buy or build? That's a big concern that many people have in general. Whether you're starting a build for a new home or not, or you plan on finding a resale, getting that relocation done and getting down there in a rental, it might be a little bit smaller than what you plan on your final home being. There's a lot of pros to finding that rental first because then you're in that area and you can decide if it's what you like. Uh, there's also cons because rent can be expensive and the rental prices keep rising steadily. In addition to home values going up by 10% in the past year, national rents are also up three to five percent regionally giving that high dollar amount for rent and then having to move twice if you can time it where you don't have to rent first and there's a resale that you can take down or even a new construction that you can time it perfectly where you wait to sell your property in the state you're moving from until the new construction home is just about to be completed that can work out for you as well all right what's another question that they're asking through the website another question we commonly get is like where do i find the new construction homes or lots because often those are not listed specifically on the builder website exactly you know and i don't think they're doing it on purpose i think they do want to get the information out there to yes. the people through their marketing departments you know no offense to them but it's just moving so fast uh, there's people waiting in line to build a new home with a certain builder. They're, they want to know when are you going to release lots? Because I want this floor plan on that lot. They're, they've done their research. And, th and that's a, the advice I would give is basically uh, reach out to a local professional. You can go through the Moving to Florida guide right here on their tab of relocation experts for that specific area. You know, who's this guy? Orlando. Huh. Um, and <laughs> they're going to be the, the ones to tell you the most local knowledge. In many cases, we have to physically go to these sales offices to know when the release is coming. What is the pricing going to be? In some cases, how much over asking price do I have to bid to get a lot? How much are the structural options? And those are all things you're going to want to know before you make your decision on even a particular community, neighborhood, house plan. Uh, some of the relocations we helped with were corporate relocations. And what they do is they have a network of realtors in specific areas that they want you to work with because in many cases, they're actually getting a referral fee from that realtor's commission to help you cover costs of closing and moving expenses. So it's kind of a package deal. And we love working with those corporate relocation partners. And in many cases, you can choose which realtor that you want to work with for your corporate relocation and just have that relocation department reach out to that expert to connect the two of them. So that's a top tip for relocations. So in speaking about Lake Nona, many of the customers I've worked with, besides saying, you know, what do the homes look like, the pricing of the homes, it's more questions like, what is there to do in that area? Especially if it's a new area and there's maybe not as many established restaurants. And so they want to get that knowledge from locals who are living in the same place that they're going to be moving to. And many of them are coming from the same areas. So I was recently on Lake Nona Social Community Facebook group, which is a local great resource. Uh, here's what it looks like on Facebook. You can check that out. It's a public group. You can see these are public comments. You can read some of these advice from other people. Someone was coming from a state up north. This post, they asked about what is the neighborhood like? You know, it's a pretty broad question. But the, the post got 200 comments in the first 
two hours. Wow, that's that's a good amount. And some of the comments were passionate comments from people that had already relocated recently, some of them from the same state this person was coming from, uh, giving their honest opinion. One of the comments was a person from California who just came here about a year ago. Adriana says, you will need more than one day to get to know Lake Nona well. I completely agree with that, Adriana. I came from the summer, last summer from California, and it took me one month in an Airbnb to find a place. The market here is still hot for sellers. Probably this area will be one of the last to see the housing market back to normal. I mean, that part of that comment really hit the nail on the head. I feel like even though values have grown significantly in Lake Nona in the past year or two, because people are realizing just what a great master plan community it is, and you have the Disney coming, you have uh, companies coming, and more amenities for families, there's still a lot of growth yet to come with all these new construction areas around us. So I feel like the next five years is gonna see Lake Nona just really come to its fruition. Yes. And, and many people just coming in now will still feel like they were early adopters. Cause they can say like, oh, we got here when there wasn't any of that stuff built down to the South or that school wasn't built yet. So it's, it's sometimes difficult for people that have been here longer to take that memory out and say, Hey, there's still people that are just discovering this for the first time. They're loving it. And they're getting a benefit by coming in slightly later because all those amenities are already built up. Yeah. Now the town center is coming more to fruition. Lots of new construction, new developments going on. I think the new Wave Hotel. Um, just a lot of new things going on there taking place. Another good piece of advice that I agree with is from Kelly talking about the best advice when we were moving years ago was to consider how the development of the area will affect your purchase from roads, uh, rezoning of school zones, growth, traffic, thinking ahead. Because when you when you buy into a growing area, in many cases, people, they buy in, they're happy with it, and then they want all the traffic and the, the, everything to stop. And that's just not how this works. This is like a, a well-built machine. They're building the developer, uh, but they are thinking about traffic patterns and infrastructure. It's a little bit of growing pains as it's growing, but then when more roads open up and schools, you know, hopefully everything will equalize uh, but it is going to be a more populous area. Like Lakewood Ranch has grown considerably. Oh, immensely. More in my neck of the woods there. But yeah, just the expansion, just just the notoriety of the community and the accolades that it, it's achieved to date brings more people. And then it's building more roads that keep expanding a little bit further east. New schools, new fire departments, new infrastructure that has to be built. Communities themselves, most of the master plan, did they just you know generate more growth based mm -hmm. upon their, their results to date? Word then, gets out. And how cool is it when you get into that community. And after a couple of years, you say, wow, we really like it here. And we can actually build a new home and pick out everything we want that's bigger than the first home we got here. Part of these people driving this growth are residents that are already there. And that's a good sign because when a, a community is having people move within the community, yes. moving up, moving down, that means they like it there. Well, that's another great benefit of master plan communities. They offer typically you know, many different choices of house plans at multiple price points, you mm -hmm. know, whether you're looking to, like you said, you know, and, and on the website, or downsize. you know, you have on the blog section, you have your top 10 best selling master plan communities, Correct. West coast versus East coast. You have all these great comparison articles that you've put together for people to read about and just gain some of that broad based knowledge before they reach out to a local expert. Exactly. Paul, anything else you wanted to add? Just appreciate the opportunity being on the show today, be able to share this great resource with all your viewers out there. We keep adding new topics all the time. Well, and thank you for joining us on this studio session talking about moving to Florida. If you found this video informative and helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. We're gonna be rolling out some more informative video series right from here very shortly. Thanks again for watching everybody and we'll see you around the neighborhood.